Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this IT governance webinar on bridging the gap between Euro privacy and GDPR. I'm Alan Calder. I'm the chief executive of uh, IT governance. Uh, I've been in this industry for some 15 or 20 years, uh, both on the cybersecurity and on the privacy side of what is increasingly a clearly uh, integrated uh, area of challenge for most organizations. You cybersecurity breach that doesn't typically involve a data, a personal data breach and vice versa. I've written a bunch of books uh, on it and my company, IT Governance, particularly IT Governance Europe, is a major uh, contributor to the world of helping organizations be secure from a cybersecurity point of view. Alice Turley, who's joining me today, uh, is our senior and lead consultant on GDPR and Euro privacy. She's a certified Euro privacy lead implementer and auditor. So from her, you get the expertise of how to do it right and how to find out what's not right. Um, and she's been consulting and training uh, and doing everything that goes with being a subject matter expert for us around uh, cybersecurity, privacy, including uh, areas like PCI and PCI compliance uh, for, uh, for many years. So uh, she is going to be talking about the important part of uh, Euro privacy, the, the stuff that requires genuine knowledge. I'm just going to do the uh, beginning and end stuff that enables you to think that um, uh, I roughly have an idea of what's going on. We're going to be talking today uh, about Euro privacy, but from the perspective of uh, IT governance, we've uh, spent, uh, as I said, 20 years in the world of cybersecurity. Uh, we led the way in terms of products and services for GDPR. Uh, we've got some 12,000 clients spread across uh, all five continents. Uh, we have a huge range of GDPR products and services and a comprehensive uh, GDPR and ISO 27001 product offering. To boot, we are a Euro privacy official partner. We're a global uh, consultancy partner for Euro privacy. That's uh, not something that many organizations uh, are recognized as, uh, but it does mean that from us, you can expect to get not only uh, best in class information and advice, but you can get it across wherever you are in the world. So uh, that can take the form of uh, consultancy help and support. It can be in the form of uh, training support that you might need around GDPR or any of the related areas. It could be around uh, penetration testing or any of the range of technical and organizational measures that might be necessary to secure privacy data. It might be around how to make sure that you've got the right privacy notice, the right uh, uh, method of recognizing the rights and uh, the rights of, of data subjects, the whole range of areas in which our expertise can contribute to peace of mind. So uh, today we're going to be talking about a fairly straightforward agenda, a brief introduction to Euro privacy uh, and the, the link between Euro privacy and GDPR and why Euro privacy as a certification route is a sensible way to go. Um, the role of GDPR readiness assessments in um, identifying and preparing for GDPR, for Euro privacy certification in uh, identifying potential privacy risks. Um, and then how to bridge the gap between what Euro privacy requires and what you'd be being certified against and uh, the actual uh, requirements in and around uh, GDPR itself. So how do you get uh, Euro privacy certified? Um, and then we'll come back and look at some of the tools and documents and services which can help you do that. In particular, we'll be looking uh, briefly at a platform that can help with the underlying complexity of linking GDPR compliance and uh, cybersecurity in a way that enables you to demonstrate to the satisfaction of Euro privacy auditors uh, that what you're doing meets the requirements of that as a standard. So. Um, uh, an introduction to uh, Euro privacy. Am I handing over to you here, Alice, or at the next break? It's at the next break, Alan. Yeah. That's what I hope. So uh, let me talk briefly <laughs> around uh, Euro privacy and its role in how that can help you demonstrate GDPR compliance. Bearing in mind that um, up till now, the only way you can prove that you're GDPR compliant uh, is really by getting a judge to find in your favor in a court case. Otherwise, it's your word against anybody else's. And increasingly, 
both in terms of our end user customers and in terms of the organizations to whom we are providing services, what they all want to know is that we are GDPR compliant, whether it's EU or UK GDPR as the case may be, they want to know that we are genuinely compliant. And the only way you can really do that, bar a court case, which is kind of painful and unnecessary, is with some kind of certification. And prior to all the work which the Euro Privacy team did to create and get a European data protection seal uh, approved by the European Council, it was impossible. There was no formal method of demonstrating that you were GDPR compliant. You could demonstrate you had a good ISO 27001 information security management system or a good business continuity management system because you could follow a specification and you could have a third party order to come and do an audit and give you a certificate of compliance. You couldn't do that for GDPR. But um, GDPR recognizing that as an issue uh, under Article 42 always provided for the possibility that a seal or a certification process might be created which would enable organizations to demonstrate that their data processing comply with EU GDPR um, and by extension this wasn't built into EU GDPR it's been part of the sensible approach that the Euro privacy team have taken by extension um, you can demonstrate compliance with relevant national and international privacy regulations as part of a broader um, set of compliance activities around protecting personal data. So um, Euro Privacy is the world's first data privacy certification standard, a seal um, that the uh, European Research Programme uh, funded the work of. Um, so uh, quite a lot of work gone in, also supported by Switzerland, because of course, while Switzerland is outside the EU, uh, it has its own data protection regime. Uh, there's an awful lot of trade between Switzerland and the European Union. And so a common approach to certifying uh, GDPR makes sense. Uh, the European Centre for Certification and Privacy will continue looking after the standard, updating it, making it work in much the same way as international standards bodies do for standards. Uh, Euro Privacy as a certification is recognised from the off in all 27 uh, EU member states. Uh, it's available to both data controllers and data processors. Uh, you don't have to be just one or the other, um, but it's really only available to organizations that are required to have a DPO. And that, uh, that required to have might be because uh, it's a management decision as to how you want to manage data, um, but it's for organizations specifically that have uh, data protection offices and services therefore activities therefore which uh, uh, might require the input and oversight of a data protection office. So um, what does certification do? Certification uh, first of all makes sure that any organization seeking certification is genuinely compliant with GDPR. So um, it's a standard, it sets out a number of areas that you need to comply with uh, activity and the core criteria is the starting place and the core criteria are exactly what you would expect them to do. It's um, uh, do you have a lawful basis for processing whatever personal data you're processing? How do you deal with the processing of special data? Have you got processes that are uh, compliant with GDPR in respect of managing data subject rights? Uh, are you dealing uh, effectively with your responsibilities as a data controller because even if you're a data processor in respect of a number of activities you'll still be a data controller in respect of uh, if nothing else the employment of your own staff so are you if you're a data controller uh, complying with your requirements if you're a data processor is that probably recognized do you have processes in place that enable you to respond to a data controller's requirements appropriately um, are you managing uh, processing security of processing data protection by design and default, are those all built into what you're doing? How do you manage data breaches? Do you understand as a processor or controller or uh, both uh, how data breaches have to be identified, what the thresholds are for reporting, who you have to report them to, how you deal with them, how you respond to them? Uh, do you have a uh, appropriate process around data protection impact assessments where you make significant changes to software is there a DPIA which is built into your process? Um, does it help you determine what the appropriate controls will be to manage the new ways in which personal data is made available to uh, the people within your organization and outside it who might uh, access data? 
if you have a data protection officer, is the role genuinely independent of the processing? Is it a, a genuine and legally compliant data protection officer? Our data transfers, particularly outside of the uh, European Union and the uh, European economic area, are uh, in line with the requirements of uh, GDPR. If you're moving data to the US, um, are you doing that in line with the latest form of data processing agreement, for instance? So uh, core uh, uh, principles, you need to be in compliant with those. And where appropriate, those core principles uh, are supplemented by a, an, an additional set of uh, checks and controls in respect of technology, in respect of um, how uh, um, data is dealt with specifically in particular domains. So how health data is dealt with, for instance, in the um, health sector has a number of additional specific requirements around it. And of course, technical and organizational measures. As I said, a data breach and the uh, cybersecurity breach are different sides of the same event. Uh, and it's technical and organizational measures, uh, which uh, no doubt you're meant to be uh, in line with uh, the state of the art that should be keeping you out of the uh, clutches of cyber criminals and also of the mistakes and errors of your own staff and of processes and controllers. So uh, all of those are areas on which uh, a Euro privacy certification process will focus, on which the Euro privacy audit will concentrate, and therefore your Euro privacy certificate, which is valid for three years, uh, that's uh, you know like any other uh, management system standard, it's a good long period, it'll have ongoing uh, audits through the process, but it's a good uh, approach to certification. And so and I'm gonna hand you over to Alice in a minute to talk to you in more detail about uh, what certification requires, but you may already have found that you have areas that you want to ask questions about uh, and you're all on mute so that we can cut out background noises but please do there is in your go to webinar control panel a um, horizontal bar which is marked questions if you click on that uh, you can type questions into that and please do take full advantage of go to webinar functionality put in there any questions that you've got as we go along um, whatever strikes you and then what we'll do is when we come to the end of the bit where we're talking um, we will go to the uh, questions and I'll share the question with everybody and, and either Alice or I will answer it depending on uh, whether we can or cannot. Um, so uh, that way, with a bit of luck, uh, by the end of this webinar, not only will we have shared you what we've planned to share with you, but you will have been able to ask any additional questions that um, we can practically answer. So um, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, um, I'm going to just, apart from making clear that uh, the Euro privacy uh, a trademark is an internationally trademarked trademark. It's not something anybody can claim. You, you, you need to use it in line with the uh, requirements that come with your certification. You'd expect to find that that's the same standard approach that you get with um, a, a BSI or a UCAS, or any other accredited certification mark. So um, there we are. I'm going to hand you over to uh, Alice, who will talk to you now. Uh, on a couple of subjects, starting with the role of GDPR readiness assessments in identifying and mitigating potential privacy risks. Um, and if we've managed to deal with some of the vagaries of certainly my computing equipment, uh, that will work. Um, but we'll see how that goes right now. So, uh, Alice, over to you. Thank you very much, Alan. So I'm going to talk um, a little bit about the role of GDPR readiness assessments in identifying and mitigating potential privacy risks. However, before I look at the role of readiness assessments, let's consider what a GDPR readiness assessment actually is. So in a nutshell, it's, it's an assessment of your organization's current compliance with the requirements of the GDPR. Uh, quite frequently, organizations refer to readiness assessments as gap analyses. Uh, some organizations use uh, readiness assessment as a continuous improvement tool, looking at ways to improve the business. Uh, for example, when employing a new business strategy. Other organizations would uh, complete readiness assessment when new legislation is released, so as to determine what actions they need to take in order to be compliant with the newly issued legislation. Uh, many organizations um, uh, complete comprehensive GDPR readiness assessments so as to ensure that they have addressed the most pertinent gaps. Um, many of our clients uh, when starting on their GDPR or ISO implementation journeys um, request a gap analysis or a readiness assessment to be completed so that they know what they have to work on um, in order to become compliant with the applicable uh, requirements. 
So a good GDPR readiness assessment um, will help you to understand the GDPR compliance requirements that are applicable to your organisation. Um, will help you to determine how many requirements your organisation complies with and uh, most importantly the requirements that your organisation is not currently complying with. A good GDPR readiness assessment will identify non-compliances that need to be addressed and it will provide you with a path for prioritisation of remediation actions so that higher rated risks will be the initial focus. Um, uh, I believe there are essentially five steps involved in conducting a GDPR readiness assessment. So firstly, with step one, um, most importantly, considering all your applicable requirements, um, ensure that all uh, GDPR uh, requirements um, applicable to your organization are included within your assessment questions. You need to ensure that you select people that you want to interview and ensure that you are selecting the right people to include it. Um, so for example, in completing a GDPR readiness assessment, you will want to ensure that you talk to representatives from each business unit that processes personal data. Um, and you should always plan what questions you are going to ask. Um, step two then um, is about assessing the current state versus the compliant state. So by looking at the current state, you're determining your starting line for improvement. So in this step, you are asking questions to determine if there's a gap between the current state and the compliant state. You will be interviewing people, you will be looking at documentation and capturing all uh, responses, uh, highlighting areas of non-compliance and noting opportunities for improvement along the way. Step three then um, refers to understanding the non-compliances, the gaps uh, that you have found in your assessment and putting some order on these gaps, risk rating the actions required so that you can prioritise actions that need to be taken more immediately than others. Uh, for example, if I was completing a GDPR readiness assessment um, and as part of the assessment it was evident that the organisation did not have a privacy notice, I would be recommending that a privacy notice be documented as a high priority. Step four then uh, revolves around implementing the remediation actions or recommendations. Uh, all findings or, or recommendations from a readiness assessment should be fed into a, a recommendation tracker. Um, owners should be assigned uh, and completion due dates agreed. Um, the due dates should be selected based on level of priority of the recommendation based on risk. Um, so for example, a, a recommendation with a high priority you would expect would be implemented within say one month. Um, medium priority actions should really not go past three months whereas low priority uh, could be given four to six months for completion. Um, obviously there will be exceptions but the completion timeframes for these should really be pre-agreed by the senior management team um, and the reason for the extension then documented in the recommendation tracker. And the final step then, uh, step five, really refers to lessons learned. Um, so were recommendations implemented? Um, if not, why not? Um, what other actions need to be taken? Um, recommendations past their due date should be reviewed regularly with medium and high priority actions discussed by senior management every month or every quarter. Um, if, if your organisation has an committee, then outstanding recommendations should be a standard agenda item for each meeting. So a good uh, GDPR readiness assessment will evaluate your organisation's data protection governance, its risk management, its resourcing, uh, the organisation's roles and responsibilities, the scope of compliance, um, the organisation's personal data processes, uh, the organization's personal information management system, PIMS, um, its information security management system, its ISMS, and data subject rights. So I'm going to talk about each of these um, in a little bit more detail. So firstly, data protection governance. Um, a good GDPR readiness assessment um, appraises the extent to which data protection, uh, accountability, responsibility, uh, policies and procedures, performance measurement controls, and reporting mechanisms to monitor compliance are in place and operating throughout your organization. 
uh, when it comes to risk management, um, a GDPR readiness assessment should evaluate your organization's arrangements for privacy risk management. The extent to which information specific risks are incorporated into the corporate risk management framework and the extent to which risks to the rights and freedoms of data subjects are addressed. Um, remember the GDPR is a risk based legislation focusing very much on the risk to the individual, the data subject, and this should be reflected within an organization's risk management framework. Um, for GDPR resourcing, um, a readiness assessment will estimate the extent to which your organization has implemented um, an appropriately staffed, funded and supported GDPR compliance program. Roles and responsibilities, um, the extent to which your organization has defined um, and established appropriate roles and responsibilities um, and delivered appropriate training and awareness should really be a key part of a readiness assessment. Um, so, for example, um, considering whether your organization is required to appoint a DPO, uh, whether one has been appointed and, and if so, whether or not they are um, meeting the regulations requirements. Uh, in considering the scope of compliance, has your organization clearly defined the scope of its GDPR compliance? Um, does your organization take into account all data processing in, in which it has um, a part, regardless of whether it's as a data controller or um, a data processor? Um, as you can imagine, a, a fundamental piece of a, a GDPR readiness assessment is to determine the extent um, to which each of the GDPR's data processing principles are established um, for each process that involves personal data, so whether uh, a lawful basis for processing has been identified um, and documented for each processing activity, um, whether a DPIA, a, a data protection impact assessment, is mandatory or not. Um, has your organization implemented a PIM, a personal information management system? And does this PIMS um, include documenting its GDPR compliance and addresses staff training and awareness? Uh, when it comes to an ISMS then, an information security management system, um, a good readiness assessment will take into account if your organization has implemented an ISMS to meet the GDPR's requirements for appropriate technical and organizational measures um, in order to secure um, or to ensure security of the personal data that it processes. Um, and, and finally, um, last uh, but not least, um, a readiness assessment will evaluate your organization's adherence with the rights of a data subject, uh, taking into account the processes your organization has implemented to um, facilitate and, and respond to data subjects who are exer um, exercising their rights um, under the GDPR. I'm just moving on. Ah, there we go. Um, so, um, as the slide uh, states, a, a GDPR readiness um, assessment um, will provide you with a plan for full GDPR compliance. Um, as part of our uh, approved partner, um, your privacy offering, um, IT Governance conducts um, a complete GDPR readiness assessment at the outset of your Euro privacy implementation, um, and thus allows you then time to address risks um, and implement controls that you can plan for um, and ultimately demonstrate for GDPR compliance. Um, so moving on then to the next section, um, as um, Alan mentioned earlier, um, organisations must uh, meet the GDPR, uh, I'll just see the slide, perfect, uh, organisations must meet the Euro Privacy GDPR core criteria um, and these um, four criteria cover various aspects of data processing and protection. Um, however, the Euro Privacy um, Certification goes beyond the requirements of um, the GDPR um, and it includes other criteria, checks and controls that must be met in addition to the GDPR core uh, compliance, uh, core criteria. Um, in order to achieve the, the overall Euro Privacy Certification. So I'm going to discuss this um, other criteria over the next few slides. So starting here, there are four, um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there are four Euro Privacy Certification Criteria categories, um, as you can see from this graphic. Um, the first of which is the core GDPR criteria. 
Then we have the complementary contextual checks and controls, which are very much domain and technology specific. Um, we have technical and organizational measures, or TOMS, checks and controls, which uh, can be replaced by a valid 27001 certificate. Um, and we have national requirements, which um, includes an assessment against national specific requirements. So I'm going to take each of these in turn over the next few slides and starting with our next slide, um, looking at the Europe Privacy Core GDPR criteria. Um, so this is um, essentially a list of all um, uh, obligations um, as part of the uh, GDPR articles. So it covers the lawfulness of processing and the processing of special categories of personal data, the rights of the data subject. Um, it also covers data controller and data processor responsibilities, as well as the security of processing and data privacy by design and by default. Um, just to note, this um, list um, here on the slide is not a definitive list. Um, all areas of the GDPR are covered, um, including data transfers, uh, data protection impact assessments, uh, DPO obligations, etc. Um, and this list of core GDPR um, criteria uh, contained within the Europe Privacy Certification is a mandatory list. And so on the right hand side of the slide, you can see a snapshot, uh, a snapshot, a snapshot uh, of what the target of evaluation looks like um, for the core GDPR criteria. Now, the target of evaluation, um, this refers to the data processing which is to be assessed and certified. Um, you might remember from um, our earlier webinar, the Euro Privacy Certificate is based on processing activities. Um, most organisations will select two processing activities to seek um, your Privacy Certification in initially, and then expand on this to include more um, data processing activities. So when pursuing um, certification, an organization um, assisted by an approved Europe Privacy Partner like ourselves will complete a target of evaluation for the core GDPR criteria. And this snapshot here is showing um, three of the target of evaluation controls that appear under the rights of the data subject section. Um, so we have the control reference number on the left hand side. And then three columns. And um, the first of these three columns refers to the the target, and that is uh, who is who the control is applicable to. So it would be C for data controller, uh, P for data processor, or CP, um, which is for both. The second then of these three columns um, outlines whether the control is S or G. So S means it's a specific control. So the control is specific to a particular data processing activity, whereas G means a general control. So it's a control that is common to several uh, data processing activities. And the third of these three columns then donates a level, um, and there are four levels. So A means mandatory, so the control is mandatory for all data processing activities. B means that the control is not required for certifying simple data processing activities, um, but mandatory for certifying high risk data processing. Um, C means contextual, so the control is mandatory according to the context of the processing. Um, and lastly, the, the fourth level, E, means exemption, um, which can be used then for determining um, and justifying if an exemption applies to a requirement. Um, in the next column, then, you have the actual criteria, the, the control requirement itself. Um, and remember, similar to the ISO certification standards, uh, anywhere you see the word shall, it really means must. Um, the next column there, where you can see uh, to be completed, uh, in here you are required to enter evidence and documents to support meeting the control requirement. And then the final three columns are used for determining whether the control is being met or not, making recommendations and highlighting if a control is non-compliant. So this provides you with a sample of what the Euro Privacy GDPR core criteria looks like. But now let's have a look at the technical and organizational measures, checks um, and controls. So the technical and organizational measures or TOMS, uh, checks and controls, are a list of, uh, as it states, uh, technical and organizational measures, which are also mandatory. But if the target of evaluation does not include any high risk data processing, 
they can be replaced by an active 27001 and uh, 27701 certification. So the target um, value of evaluation for TOMS looks like what you see here on the left hand side of the slide um, with the same columns and headings as those used for the GDPR core criteria. Um, while the GDPR mentions having appropriate technical and organisational measures uh, throughout the regulation, um, it doesn't go into very much detail to advise what those technical and organisational measures could be. So your policy have very helpfully defined technical and organisational measures, checks and controls. Um, and if your organisation has a valid 27001 certification, um, you will find that you have a considerable number of these controls already in place. Um, if your organisation has extended your 27001 certificate to include privacy, so it has the, um, it includes the 27701 standard, um, then you will find that you have the majority of these um, technical organisational measures already in place. Uh, and I'm going to move on now to look at the complementary contextual uh, checks and controls. So, in addition to the GDPR core criteria and the TOMS checks and controls, uh, your privacy have also specified complementary contextual uh, checks and controls. Um, as we have on, on the slide, they're clustered in various subsets of checks and controls that are applicable to specific technologies and application domains. Um, these controls are specific to assess the domain and technology specific data protection requirements. Um, and they are mandatory for organizations in specific industries or sectors that are listed within the document. Um, so for example, if you are, um, uh, if you're processing activity that your organization is certifying, um, if it includes processing on a public website, then your organization will be required to meet the requirements under control one here and specifically control 1.1.1, which you can see on the right hand side of your slide. Um, so your organization will need to ensure that HTTPS is enabled by default when accessing the web interface. And I would also need to ensure that it meets any national rules and guidelines that apply in relation to the use of cookies. Um, the complementary contextual uh, checks and controls, um, they include um, controls um, uh, in relation to a lot of areas. So um, public websites, uh, video cameras and uh, audio monitoring, like you you see here in, in um, the snapshot that we have here. Um, but also uh, this target of evaluation, um, it also covers controls in relation to areas, including uh, newsletters and direct marketing, uh, electronic communications, um, smart cities, uh, biometric medical and health data, automated decision-making, um, artificial intelligence and data analytics, um, and a lot more. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on now to the um, fourth um, your privacy certification criteria category, and that is national requirements. So the National Obligations Conformity Assessment Report, or NOCAR, um, provides a professional and systematic assessment of conformity of the target of evaluation with the identified complementary national legal obligations in terms of data protection. So the NOCAR includes requirements in relation to national jurisdiction, uh, complementary laws and regulations, and complementary national uh, requirements. So really each country has um, several specific national laws and regulations that may impact and extend the requirements for data protection. Um, the GDPR requires that certified data processing complies with the national data protection regulation, um, including any domain specific regulations that are applicable to the target of evaluation. So that uh, would include that they are is referring to the data processing activity that's being certified. So to demonstrate compliance with these national regulations, um, an organization must request a legal expert with the adequate expertise to assess the compliance of the target of evaluation with the applicable national regulations and requirements. Um, this assessment is completed in the form of a written report um, and is called the, the National Obligation Compliance Assessment Report, or NOCAR. Um, Euro Privacy actually provides a list of the important national requirements for each um, European country um, that needs to be addressed within the NOCAR. 
Um, and that actually brings me to the end of this section of the webinar. Um, hopefully you have a better understanding now of how the Your Privacy Certification um, is more than just um, the GDPR criteria. Um, I'll hand you back over to Alan, who is going to talk about Cyber Comply and how it can be used for your Your Privacy implementations. Thank you. Alice, thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, Euro Privacy is a uh, not just a certification of the fact that you're GDPR compliant, but a real step forward in terms of being very clear about what compliance looks like, what you've got to do across the which you've got to do it so that you can demonstrate to the world that you're compliant. And it's something which, for instance, to a managed service provider who um, is under pressure under the Digital Operational Resilience Act to uh, demonstrate compliance with a range of laws. It's a logical way in which a managed service provider could demonstrate to those of its financial uh, sector customers that it's GDPR compliant. It's a way in which any organization, data processes in particular, but any organization processing personal data needs to demonstrate GDPR, GDPR compliance can do that. And before I move on, just a reminder, if you do have questions, please do post them into the uh, question section of your uh, GoToWebinar chat box. We will uh, pick up all the questions and share the questions and answers with you when we come to that portion of the six or seven minutes time. So, um, turning to the process of uh, getting yourself compliant, the how, the how do you actually go about doing it? Um, you've got to kind of recognize that GDPR itself is a complex set of uh, regulations. Uh, it's a multi-clause, multi-page, uh, complex uh, set of requirements. It interfaces with a set of cybersecurity requirements. It might interface with, with DORA, with the Network Information Security Directive, with um, other local uh, regulations. It almost certainly interfaces with ISO 27001 um, and with other standards. And for any organization to try and do all of that using uh, Word documents or any other version of digital document uh, and a spreadsheet to manage your risk assessment and controls is a guaranteed way to give yourself a disaster. Um, there's no practical way in which in today's environment you can manage the complexity over an extended period of time of uh, compliance activity other than using a cyber compliance platform, a platform which is designed to uh, enable you to do a risk assessment, to manage risk assessments in a consistent way, robustly, uh, that is updated by subject matter experts on a regular basis using documentation which uh, meets a whole range of legal requirements where documentation is, implement is integrated uh, and where everything that you need to do, including uh, access uh, in the longer run for auditors and the management of audits and so on, takes place on a platform. One of the big benefits of doing that all on a platform is, of course, that um, when your, uh, the people in your compliance team, and most organizations have a relatively small compliance team after all, as we know, compliance is not a value adding uh, area for most organizations, um, they struggle to handle the complexity. But give them a platform which has everything in it. They can then apply their expertise to manage compliance and make sure that it genuinely delivers value to the organization. And CyberComply is exactly that platform. It's a platform that we've developed over a number of years. Uh, it does uh, things that are fundamentally important for your privacy uh, compliance. It does, for instance, data flow mapping. It enables you to map all of the data flows that you have in a way that is robust. You can update as you need to, tracks your data flows nationally and internationally, it enables you to generate your Article 30 compliance uh, um, documentation very straightforwardly. It'll do Data, it'll manage data subject access requests for you, it'll manage data protection impact assessments for you, it'll interface with a cybersecurity uh, risk assessment, it will generate uh, the documentation templates that you need in a way that you can update quickly um, and, and cost effectively. It means you're not going down any blind uh, dead ends uh, uh, trying to find solutions yourself. It's there. You can get on with drawing on our expertise to make sure that your GDPR and cybersecurity frameworks are as good as you can possibly get them. So um, I don't want to talk a lot about CyberComply. It's much better that you avail yourself of the opportunity to go and have a look at it. Um, if when you get the slides, and we'll uh, share the slides out 
to everybody registered on the webinar at the end of it. Uh, if you follow that link through to um, uh, GRC subsidiary, Vigilant Software, which uh, is the vendor, the prime vendor and developer at CyberComply, uh, you can get a good uh, demonstration of it. You can have a really good look at uh, how CyberComply can make your general cybersecurity, GDPR, your privacy activity way simpler, much more cost effective. And you know, like all platforms, yes, it takes time and effort to set up, but the real savings and benefits come over the years that follow because you have everything where you need it. It's like a CRM system for data. It's like a financial system for finance. It's, it's the system which enables you to do everything else that you need to do in a robust and consistent and coherent way. So CyberComply uh, is a key platform. Do have a look at it. It's fundamental to today's compliance environment where organizations have to comply with more and more frameworks. Um, CyberComply already uh, has PCI controls in it. Um, it has Swift controls and it has the broad range of the control frameworks that you might need um, are all there. But IT governance can go much further than can simply introducing you to uh, CyberComply. We can we can provide the expertise that you might need. We can uh, we can deliver GDPR related training. We can give practitioner uh, training for GDPR practitioners. We have a DPO uh, certification scheme that enables those who want to be DPOs to get a professional qualification as a data protection officer. We can do your Euro privacy assessment. We can do exactly what Alice has been talking about in terms of um, helping you identify where you have gaps, what you need to do to bring yourself to full compliance. We have, because what with IT governance you get is, a, is access to an ecosystem, um, we can do the penetration tests that requires. It requires that on a regular basis you test the infrastructure which supports the processes for which you're being certified. Tests need to be done in a way that meets your privacy compliance requirements. Part of uh, the whole IT governance offering are exactly those penetration tests carried out by certified uh, penetration testers. So pretty well any component of what is required for your privacy, we can deliver it for you. We can make it possible for you to access yourself. Hey, you might even want to train your own team to do penetration testing and through us. We can provide you with all of the items that you need to pursue Euro privacy compliance because it's really Euro privacy compliance and getting that uh, data seal in place that means that as an organization you can begin to move on from GDPR is a problem to GDPR is a solution uh, and it's part of your value proposition to your clients uh, that you can demonstrate that GDPR is not something they need to worry about where you are concerned because you've sorted it, you've done the worrying yourself, you've got a, a process, a set of processes which meet GDPR requirements and are certified as doing such. And you can access our entire range of Euro privacy services, ladies and gentlemen, through any one of our websites, um, uh, ITG uh, EU for all of our clients in the EU, um, ITG in the UK, or if you're in the US providing services into uh, the EU or the UK, then you know through our US business, we have a very integrated global uh, service offering. So we can help you tackle your privacy in whichever way is appropriate for you. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of what we had planned to say in about as long as we'd planned to take. So the floor is now open for those of you who have uh, questions around any aspect of what we've been talking about, Euro privacy as a standard about how to uh, go about uh, uh, getting ready for it, how we can help you do that. As I said, in your go to webinar control panel, there is a questions section. If you want to type any questions you have into that, uh, I will read the question out so everybody knows what the question is. And then uh, if we can, and we probably can, uh, we will uh, answer the question so you and everybody else knows what the answer is. So I'll just pause for a moment for those of you who may have questions to put them into the question box. Um, in the meantime, Alan, I might just bring up um, a question or two that I frequently get asked, um, which I'm sure will probably appear um, in these questions as well. Um, I suppose regularly I get asked, can I, can I select only one data processing activity initially to pursue certification? Um, 
Um, and uh, I suppose the answer there is yes, you certainly can. Um, your privacy do recommend that an organisation initially applies for certification with a minimum of two data processing activities. Um, but it's completely up to the organisation themselves as to how many or, or how um, or little processing activities that they want to take um, initial certification to. Good question um, and answer. Um, also, actually, I can see there, um, can an organization outside of Europe obtain the Euro Privacy Certification? Um, so yes, an organization certainly can. Um, as the Euro Privacy Certification, very similar to the, the ISO certifications, it is actually um, a globally recognized um, certification. Um, it also, again, very similar to the ISO process, it is valid for three years um, with yearly surveillance audits then conducted in between um, to ensure that an organization is actually maintaining their adherence um, to the certification requirements. If there are other questions, Alice, please do pick them up. My box is blank. <laughs> um, I'm just looking down through. Um, there is, let me see, well, I've answered that about how long the your privacy certificate lasts for. Um, do I have to have a do I have to have a data protection officer um, in place in order to pursue um, the European certification? So um, yes, you do have to have um, a data protection officer um, appointed. Um, this is something we actually discussed um, recently internally. Um, it's not necessarily that you have to have um, or that you meet the legal requirements under the GDPR to appoint a DPO. You may have decided as um, best practice to appoint somebody within your organization as DPO. Um, the, the your privacy requirement it really is that just that you have a DPO appointed um, and that DPO then um, is involved um, quite a lot uh, particularly in the um, assessment when it comes to the uh, uh, target of evaluations. And, and of course your DPO could be on an as a service basis it doesn't have to be an employee um, and of course uh, uh, inside the IT governance ecosystem, uh, as you would expect, DPO as a service is an option available that uh, you could access in a way that uh, might help you advance on that front as well. Good point, good point, Alan. That certainly um, is, a, is a method that a lot of organisations have chosen when they don't don't necessarily have the, the resource to, uh, or the expertise in-house. In um, very good. Um, the, if I have um, ISO 27001 and 27701, um, does it mean that I don't have to complete the uh, TOMS uh, target of evaluation? So, um, you know, you still would have to complete the technical and organizational measures, the checks and controls, the target of evaluation. Um, uh, you would still have to complete that document. Um, uh, it's just that you would already have a huge amount of the controls um, already in place um, and you would you would be meeting them under your uh, valid um, 27001 and 27701 certifications. Um, I think that's it on the questions. I don't know, Alan, if you're seeing any, any more. No. So, ladies and gentlemen, in this there is an urgent question, in which case Alice will shout. I'm going to, on behalf of both of us, thank you all for your uh, today. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been a uh, useful uh, look at how your privacy can help you bridge to demonstrating GDPR compliance in a both cost-effective and uh, value-adding way for your organization. Uh, thank you all for being with us, uh, and I hope that uh, we can serve you in this as in any other area. So please do uh, get hold of us and um, uh, we'll do whatever we can to help you in your uh, dealing with cyber and privacy risks. Have a very good day. Thank you.